Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Insulation, and in today's video, we're doing a five channel amplifier install to the factory radio in this 2019 Ford F 150. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this uh, five channel amp to the existing eight inch factory radio. Let's get started. Now, one quick thing to note before we jump into things, we do not have the Sony sound system, the Sony Sync sound system, so we don't have to integrate into that whatsoever. If you have the factory upgraded Sony sound system, we'll link those separate specific parts that you will need in your install in the description of the video. Today, we have just the base audio system, but with a bigger screen. All right, so here at the bench, the parts I'm gonna go with for this install, uh, first and foremost is the amplifier that's gonna run the entire system. Now we're doing this NVX VAD 1105. We're pairing that up with a 12 inch uh, kicker shallow mount comp RT um, in this truck style box. And we'll link all this down in the description here for you. Now this is the dual voice coil 4 ohm. We'll wire it in parallel down to two ohms, which this is stable at. Now the, the big piece is here, how do we integrate this into the factory audio system, keeping that radio? Well, we're gonna build a T harness here today so we don't have to cut any of the factory wiring. Now this harness may be discontinued based on your location, but using the Axis AX DSP FD2, and essentially here it's a T harness that they use for their DSP. We're not doing a DSP here today, but we're using their harness instead. Um, we'll cut and modify this harness to allow us to snag signal from our factory radio and send it to our amplifier. We'll amplify that signal, send it right back up to this harness, so it essentially sends it to all the doors. Avoids having to run new wiring to each and every speaker. Pretty cool harness. Uh, we'll link also this in the description. Now, wiring-wise for the amplifier, we're doing a SCAR Audio 4-gauge um, amplifier wiring kit. This is their OFC. It's the SCAR 4 nl ofc kit. Um, this is a really nice kit for the price. We have a line-out converter because once we pull audio from the factory radio, uh, we do need some sort of line-out converter because our five-channel amplifier here does not take high-level inputs. So we'll need some sort of line-out converter here, and we're doing this PAC LP7-4. Now, last couple of things. We do have some speaker wire here. We're using some nine-conductor cable. Essentially, it has all our speaker wires all bundled in this here, which is really nice. And because we are doing a Ford, and because we're keeping the factory radio, Ford factory radios get really funky um, when they don't see a load on the output or the speaker outputs from the radio. Um, so Audio Control made these load generators that will actually put a four ohm load onto the the factory outputs of the radio so we're tricking the radio that it's directly connected to speakers instead of our amplifier and line out converter so this will be needed in our install these are a great price they're very small and uh, essentially get the job done so tons of stuff here again we're going to link everything down in the description here for you what we need to do at this point is start planning our power and ground and where we are going to mount our amplifier then we'll turn our attention over to signal and speaker output now for our amplifier we've decided to mount this underneath the back seat now generally you come factory with some sort of cubby that's underneath the rear seats this is skinny enough where it'll actually sit in that cubby so we built a platform where it'll sit nicely in the cubby and it's long Long enough where we're gonna snag one of the bolts to the seats there just to hold this in place it's not gonna go this way but it can still go this way hence why we're gonna mount it at this location now this gives us a really good starting place uh, it allows us to mount the amplifier so it's just not flopping around in there it has power ground remote turn on um, and speaker wire outputs on this side and this side has our signal input from the lineout converter as well as our controls so at this point of time let's head to the truck Let's pop the hood, start planning our wire route from the battery area through the firewall to the rear seat. Now, our battery is on the passenger front corner of the vehicle, and the power wire that we need to connect to will be to this terminal post here. Now, this is our tightening stud. We don't want to be tightening or adding any accessories to that. Um, we're going to do this to this main stud here. Now we'll need to find some firewall access 
and we'll run our power wire from the battery terminal through our inline fuse and then through the firewall of the truck. All right, so as for firewall access, the grommet that we're gonna be using is right there, kind of right behind our uh, fuse box. Now, you'll notice also, right to the left of the main wiring harness, there's a little protrusion there. It's a little nipple that we can cut off of the firewall that gives us an opportunity to run our own wiring um, through that grommet. It's actually really nice that the factory provides that. So we have some flush cuts here. We're going to cut that on off. That's going to provide direct access through the firewall into the cabin of the truck. What we've done here is we went ahead and cut that nipple off using those flush cuts there. And then uh, there is a little still piece of rubber in there that you have to pierce through. Now you can get a pick tool or a screwdriver. Uh, flathead, be very careful, but it'll essentially just poke right on through that thin rubber. And what we did here is grabbed our hanger and fished it through that hole until we could fill it from the other side. So let's go ahead and remove some panels from the inside so we can fill where it comes on through and uh, get ready to pull our wire into the cabin. Here is what that nipple looks like when we cut it off. It'll be a perfect solution for our install. All right, so what we've done here is used our notorious hanger here on the channel. We taped our wire to it. We're gonna lube it up really well with some soap and water, and uh, we're gonna lube up the hole as well. <laughs> so it passes on through pretty easily. We're gonna go from the inside and begin to pull. All right, so with these panels off and our wire pulled through, we ran it down, kind of along, just tucked it up underneath the B-pillar. Continued along, just tucked it underneath his wiring there. Up and around, across the back here, and about where we are going to put our amplifier. Now for ground, we also found a nice, really good spot back behind here. cleaned up the paint really well with a wire brush and uh, this is an anchor point for the seat so the metal here is really thick which is a great location for our ground so we tapped and put a big 10 millimeter bolt there at that location it's bare metal and it's a good good place for a ground for our amplifier now considering grounds on these f-150s and what I'm referring to is the body is made of aluminum and not steel in this generation of f-150 now you've seen in our other version of this where we actually ran another OFC wire from the back all the way to the battery ground if you feel like you need to do that you're having issues with your ground or continuity go ahead and do that we'll link that and reference that down in the description of the video in case you want to see how we did that there in this case we're not going to be running one and we will kind of see how the amplifier performs if we're struggling or if we need to upgrade our ground um, we will certainly do that so at this point of time we did our power and ground there we're going to just go ahead and vacuum up um, any metal shavings that we've created and next here let's go ahead and start pulling the radio so we can start planning our RCA our T, T harness integration and our line out converter with those load generators. All right, so here we are inside the truck. Now, the next step is we need to go ahead and get the factory radio out of the way so we can start planning our T harness, our load resistors, and our line out converter to pull signal and to send our amplified signal back to the rest of the truck. Again, we don't have the Sony sound system, so there's no factory amp. It's all produced here up front. What we need to do is get the two screws here in the top, and actually the rest of the bezel just pops on down and out of the way. All right, so we popped off our center channel here. One, two, three, four, that grill comes on off. There's gonna be two seven millimeter bolts behind that. Next 
next here, let's remove the two seven millimeter on top of the radio. And with that, the rest of the dash should just pop on out. Just like so. Okay, next we'll have a couple of harnesses to disconnect here. There we are. I'll set that carefully off to the side. Now we can actually get to the radio. This is just the screen. Our main radio is actually down below. So we don't necessarily need to move the screen. We can if we need more access. But where we're after is this radio module down below. These ones are all silver. Okay, and we'll disconnect our main radio harness. Okay, so this harness here is where our T harness will connect into and the other one will go to the radio. So at this point, we're gonna start mapping out some places here to make sure we have maybe enough space to get it all mounted up underneath. Then we'll head to the bench and start showing you how we're gonna assemble this T harness, loader resistors, and line out converter. All right, so we're back here at the bench. Now let's go ahead and talk about our T harness, line converter and load resistors, those three things. Our T harness here comes with two harnesses. Now it has something here for a center channel. Um, and basically this guy, we don't need this guy. This is not needed for application today. We're not gonna be amplifying anything else here. It does have these two leads off. This is just not needed today, so we'll set that off to the side. But what we do need is this guy. And what's cool about this harness is it breaks out our speaker wires and passes through everything else. So what we'll do is instead of just connecting this, we'll cut these ends off and essentially the end that we pulled out of the radio looks just like this. And what this will do is plug into the factory radio and the factory end that we unplugged originally will go into this harness modify our speaker ins and speaker out. So this end goes to all the speakers in the car. This end is our signal. So we're gonna reroute this to our load resistors and line out converter and everything from the amplifier will come back in through here to all the doors. This guy is for their DSP, which we're not using at this time. So we're actually gonna untape this, cut this off. This plug isn't needed at all. So let me go ahead and quickly modify this and we'll come right back. All right, there we go. Now what we've done is taken the tape off and really cut out everything we don't need. So we essentially have, this is our signal end. This will go to our loader resistors and line out converter. We also have a power and ground for our line out converter to generate a remote turn on. And then on this end is our output from the amplifier. It'll come back in through our speed wire and this will connect to the factory plug back behind the radio, the original plug, which will send that signal to all our speakers, just like that, super cool. Okay. So we pulled our lineup converter out of the box and it comes with a harness and we have two load resistors. So we got these load resistors, we didn't need the wires that came with them. Uh, so we unscrewed them and took them out. And uh, essentially the signal comes in to our load resistors. We have our front and our rear and then it puts the load on the factory radio. So we're tricking the factory radio thinking it's just plugged in directly to speakers. And then essentially from there outside, it goes to our line out converter. And then our line out converter will generate two sets of RC outputs. Now it outputs four channels of output, but we're doing a five channel amp. So the sub channel will actually in the amp will tell it the pull signal from these four. So there is our line out converter setup. We made this little panel. It's gonna go back behind the radio. There's a bolt that we cut a hole for, so it'll sit in there. Um, what we're gonna do now is essentially grab these. These will go right into our inputs here. And then our black and our yellow wire, we're gonna connect into the black and yellow wire of this harness. So it's gonna provide power. And then this is our remote output. So this will go to our amplifier to turn it on when it senses audio. So that's really, really nice that it provides this. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything stripped and prepared. And the last thing we need to do on this other end here is connect our speed wire. And we'll do that here in a moment. All right, so we finished up our T harness, our mill in plugs into the back of the radio, pulls the audio into our load resistors here and then the output from the load resistors go into our line out converter 
Now, since this T-harness also provides a yellow and a black, or a constant 12 volt and a ground, we tied that into our PAX yellow and ground. We just soldered it in and then uh, tested taped it, so that's all nice and loomed up. And uh, that's going to essentially provide a remote turn-on wire as soon as the PAX um, sees audio over the speakers or a DC offset. So that's really nice. So this will go to the amplifier remote turn-on, along with our RCAs. Then on this end of the T-harness, this is what plugs into the harness that we removed originally. The OEM plug will plug in here, and this is our audio output. So we'll bring the audio output from the amplifier all the way back up, and we're going to solder into this. The nice thing is we can disconnect this harness if needed, especially if we're doing our tuning, um, and we don't want to hear audio. But this will connect into our 9 conductor cable and the ninth conductor is a remote turn on. So that'll go to that cable, which will go to the amplifier. So our speaker output goes into here from the amplifier and RCAs will go to the amplifier to provide signal. And this is a remote turn on wire. Kind of a cool little setup. This will bolt, there's a bolt back behind the screen that we're gonna snag. That'll bolt right there in the center and this will just sit back in the dash. So that's it. This is our T harness. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. Let's go ahead now connect our nine conductor. Okay, so we have finally completed this harness. For the most part, we still got to put our heat shrink on and test the tape. Um, but our speaker output from our amplifier, from the outputs of the amplifier, are four channels that'll go to all the speakers in the vehicle. We'll run up this cable all the way up into our harness. And our harness will take that amplified signal to all our doors through this T-harness, which is super cool. So input from the factor radio, puts a load on it, a line-out converter. Line-out converter provides our, um, our RCA outputs as well as a remote turn-on wire, which we looped into our nine-conductor cable. Um, RCAs will take that signal to the amplifier, to the RCA inputs of the amplifier. Amplifier amplifies it, comes back through our speaker wire cable back into the harness of the vehicle to all the doors. So this is essentially 100% plug and play. So if we sold the truck down the road, we can actually unplug everything and take it with us. We have, have not cut any wiring within the vehicle, which makes this setup super cool. So let's finish buttoning this up and uh, we'll head to the car to start getting all this test fitted. All right, this is all done, ready to go. Plugs into the car, plugs into the radio. This will just mount up. We still need to plug it in our RCAs, and everything is zip-tied and loomed and ready for installation. All right, so we're back here in the truck. There is our mount. Take a shot here. We snagged that bolt right there. So it's all secured into place. So we've connected our T harness into the plug that was originally in the radio into our harness. You can tuck that down and out of the way now. And this plug is our, our own mail plug that'll plug, plug into the back of the radio. Then we fed our RCAs and our speed wire down through a hole in the dash, which will run back to the amplifier. So with that in, we're going to temporarily get the radio all hooked up so we can just ensure that everything is working properly. All right, so with that set of RCA cables and our speed wire. We just tucked it up underneath the carpet there, came around here, then we took these panels off just like the other side. So we ran it through, through the channel there, working our way back. Same thing back here, took that guy on off, just fed it underneath the B-pillar cover, up and around to our amplifier. Okay, so we fed our RCAs and our nine conductor speaker wire, plugged our RCAs into our amp, you already saw how we built that amp mount. And we connected our speaker outputs from that nine conductor cable into our speaker outputs of our amplifier. Now remember that blue wire runs in that nine conductor cable, it's the ninth conductor, and that goes to our remote input on our amplifier. Now base output for this sub, we came out here, um, we'll find a good place to put that. Um, but other than that, we got our power and our ground connected. We put four gauge wire ferrules on there as well, put some heat shrink on. Everything has ferrules and zip tied. And uh, basically the amplifier is all hooked up here. Now we do have to do some tuning, but we still need to finish up underneath the hood. So let's go ahead and connect 
power now to the amplifier at the battery. Now where we came through the firewall, we split loomed and we fed it up underneath. Now we built a little platform for our power wire with some leftover ABS plastic from the amp mount, mounted it to the battery box here, and that's where it comes in split looms. Again, wire ferrules in our connections as well. Then we have our fuse and fuse holder. It's nice and solid, and then a short lead that goes up to the positive post there on the battery. Now, obviously, we didn't hook up our positive honor battery um, until we were totally done hooking everything up behind the radio and at the amplifier. Once we're good, we put that on. At this point, everything's been connected. If you were nervous about making in those connections, it's always a good idea to move the negative there off the battery. Other than that, we are done up underneath the hood. We've made our connections. Our fuse is all complete, um, so we can shut the hood. So since we've made our connections, we've got everything put back together, we did turn it on and the amp is working and it's turning on and it sounds great. Obviously we still need to do a little bit of tuning, but since we've confirmed everything's working properly, we can go ahead and reassemble the dash just in reverse order. All right, so we got everything put back together here. Amplifiers all wiped down, everything's been vacuumed. There's our subwoofer with our comp 12 inch kicker shell mount RT. Uh, that's all in. Everything's been tuned. We set our gains with that SMD DD1, set our crossovers, and uh, basically everything is perfectly set to the factory radio. That's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Like I said before, we'll link all the, all the parts that we used in this video in the description for your convenience. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. If you want to see how we did door speakers, if you want to see how we did a radio install, or various other installs on this Generation F-150, we'll have those in linked in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.